go. That's right. All right. Let's all right. go. Thank you. Coming live from Chicago, going across the board from Michigan, Denver, Vegas, uh, Columbia in the future. Well, let's go. What? Okay. okay. You've you been around there. That's why? I'm half Columbia. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Oh, that's what's up. Kind of like a gringo. So, like, I get too much in my head. I'm honestly trying to break past that barrier and get more comfortable speaking it. But I totally mm-hmm. understand. I just okay. act like I didn't. Until oh, okay. You know, it's just like, oh, uh-huh. what did you say again? And everyone's like, <laughs> like oh shit like oh shit <laughs> no but again um ladies and gentlemen another episode here in can vibe our hype man here dink uh the great intro by the way <laughs> but it's been it's been a long time since you know we we met and we we've been talking about this pod and it's finally here I know yesterday we were supposed to record and all, but you know, technical difficulties, but you know, we back at it today. And let's go. Let's, Water let's under go. the bridge. Let's go, my boy. So I know it's been a while. I feel like the last time I saw you was actually at a smoke responsibility social event, or I think that was in downtown at the Ascend uh dispensary in uh, I think yeah, River yeah, North. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was uh an educational at Ascend uh uh, smoke responsibly social definitely you know for the viewers give him a follow he's good at, at what he does he educates so it, you yes. know so yeah yeah shout out to, to the boy blake um but but yeah so other than that my boy um what what really got you into the cannabis industry so let's let's go with that Woo! okay so um honestly it was the side effects but also the turf profiles, like the different smells, the taste, all of that. The fact that like you had a whole different world on like how cannabis smokes. It's effects based on how it grows. Like just that entire just package was so interesting to me. You know what I mean? Like, for example, right? The fact that you can like smoke or or vape or even dab a plant like, yo, th- this is more in a sativa end, so this may be more in- energetic. Or it may be a sativa that has like a little bit of mercine in it, so it's like, oh, you know, you got like like something like train wreck, where it's like, whoa, I am here, but this is so, this is so mentally draining of an experience that it makes me crash. Yeah, or like the, the head high, indicas. you feel me? Yeah, or you got indicas that sometimes peek through, like you you get sleepy and sedative, mm-hmm. but then get energized. And and a lot of people don't know that. Because again, we're we're it's all about like, okay, hey, sativa is up and yeah, the good and... between because it's easier to present that way. But the effects are actually across the board. So you yeah, but anyway. That's part of what got me into uh in, in like just by the effects and everything. Um I mean shoot. I've been in the industry well and I'm kinda like the you know both sides, like twenty eighteen. I think it was just since twenty ten. Uh, so about no, 2018. 2018. I wish okay. I was event like that. I surprised <laughs> people. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's only because it's like I've known people and stuff like that that you know they were involved in stuff, but like I I wasn't always a smoker. Okay. So because so I, then, I've had like OGs and stuff uh-huh. that like taught me like oh this this is what good stuff is supposed to smell like. Or hey, watch out for this, watch out for that, and stuff like that, you know. Uh to to like my my mom and stuff like that. I promise like, yo, I'm not gonna you only gotta worry about me smoking. So like, you know, when I get out of college and mm-hmm. then okay, cool. But that was back then when I thought it would have been like a distraction. To be honest, as an adult now, yeah. I wish that I, I did smoke weed a little bit in college. I know it was illegal, but like 
for what it does for like my mental health and stuff like that, or like even my ADHD, man, I would have been valedictory. So, it's, yeah, what if you got? It's uh, it's pretty amazing, like how you mentioned, like the side effects, and and yet, like I feel like overall in general, especially here in Illinois, it's like we're still at the tips of of like the iceberg here with the cannabis like when i seen i see that now more like people within the industry are starting to expand within different cannabinoids other than delta the other than thc and cbd so mm-hmm. like now, now there's more people talking about th thcv uh cbd v v or uh, C- cbn C- cbg um, so T A T H C P T H C THC, uh, damn, I had a printout about this too. Uh, but but like the, there's like a list, like it's like a lot, like the, the list is like going down, you know, like just by different types of different cannabinoids, and like it's amazing how each different cannabinoid does th- different effects. I'll take a photo of that like list that I got, so that way you have it like saved because I feel like. People got to like learn more about that anyway, just because I feel like we're purposefully like kind of like played in the regards of like, yo, don't check out diet weed or whatever. And it's like, but CBD is for pain management, you know, mm-hmm. CBN is for like, yo, you need to go to sleep. CBG, uh, like that's for like the appetite. Have- yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, yeah. it is. Um, and even in like what THCA, yeah. That's if well. we really want to get down to its terminology wise, okay, we could say it's like immature weed, not how people think when we're doing the whole thing on like it's hemp and grown in a way where it's like again, it doesn't really the A doesn't drop until it's lit. Uh huh. So it's just there. Well by itself you feel me which is kind of crazy too because like now i kind of start to figure out that you cannot you can like pretty much like the like distribute thca you know legally and like how you just mentioned shout out to grow works overall like is it really the same thing though like thca and thc that's what i'm saying okay a lot of people forget the one important thing about all of this and so i know some people are going to get mad as hell about this but uh What plan is it? Cannabis. So then my question is, um, would be kind of similar is, is it the same thing if you're uh, comparing Delta 8 to Delta 9? Now, when it comes to the Delta, that's where it gets a little tricky. Um, You can grow it, but obviously um, it's a little bit more modified in some cases now for that one i won't talk like too 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 mm-hmm. much on it because i feel like i don't know as enough as i do with you know okay. about tsca and stuff like that just because i don't if it's in a vape or something like that's cool but like i i don't i'm not like oh i'm gonna like, out of your out of your way you feel me to go get <laughs> Um, no, I feel you. So, so then I'm sure you're kind of familiar to to the to that bakery called Wake and Bake. Oh, uh, I was actually supposed to go to Wake and Bake, but like I have no problem with it. Because here's the thing: the more that we have like the legal spots that you can actually eat like food at, mm-hmm. the more opportunities that gives to different chefs out here to experiment legally with those of said ingredient, which therefore makes it easier for their pro, uh, portfolios, which let's, let's say, for example, getting an infuser license is fucking brutal in Illinois, right? But let's say if you had something like, I wouldn't say like a cooking covenant or whatever, but you plugged up with a couple of chefs and stuff, it's a little bit easier to possibly get that funding or a chance for that. But what's easier is like, yo, besides doing a pop-ups and stuff like that, if now, when you finally do have the infusers license, you can do like Wake and Bakery. 
that's where it's like eh, it gets it gets interesting. And what I mean by it gets interesting is you then have to basically do a guessing game on like, okay, not you predict it right, but like, is your food good enough and are you cool enough? I shit you not. That's what you have to worry about. Like, In the you can industry? have bomb ass food uh-huh. and have it infused and stuff like that. Like, for example, with Fusium 420 off of, uh, what was that like? Before you get to St. Lucia's, it's off of like Western and I think like Is Milwaukee. It- are you talking about the one that's like by Armitage? Yeah. Like like yeah, by yeah, in front, yeah. is it is it in front of a McDonald's? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah, Infused Cafe. I, I, I actually oh, just I actually just uh recently came across their page. Uh but it, you you've been there already? Uh yeah. Like definitely check them out. Um okay. I would say I really like excuse me, their menu. And that's the whole thing of a lot of these food places. If your venue isn't like popping, you're you're not you're not gonna survive past two years. Straight up. So overall, uh, I'm just uh, just because we're still on the topic on the wake and bake, but you think that's why they they're still, you know, up and running because because how you mentioned about the menu and I guess the popularity. I respect them a lot. They know how to market. They have they artists. They even are expanding, but yeah, they not are. I heard they're going, but I heard they actually are going to Canada, which is crazy. Now that part I didn't know about. That's actually pretty fucking cool. Uh yeah, um, it was. They just posted it uh, not too long ago that they are they're planning on opening a shop up up in Canada, which is pretty cool. You know, knowing the fact that they were, they just started from like just one stop, one shop at uh by Broadway, right down Addison. The Addison neighborhood by the Cubs stadium and right right by Lakeshore Drive. <laughs> yeah, I was I, yeah I remember, bro. I was that was like my first stop when I turned twenty one. Honestly, <laughs> so now they're um waiting to open up. Unless they have already, I, I I'm not sure. Uh, mm-hmm. off of uh, over by Midlands, that's cold ass spot to do that um even now what so if they had an original location they got the the north milwaukee location they opened up one in canada too yeah they, that- they they have one right there on wicker park as well on yeah. the vision and then I, I also just found out that they were going to open uh another location up in Birdbank next to that starbucks dispensary like literally next to it I could you not literally, bro, next to it, like literally. I think it's it's, it's literally next to it, or it's the parking lot next to it. But it's they're very. Wait, cool. you said where again? On um, Bird, is it Birdbank? Yeah, Birdbank, down down by the yeah, literally. That's bold as hell. You know where ah. where city? You know where City Ford Mall is at? Yeah, no, yeah. it's by the yeah. yeah. <laughs> they have one right there yeah I, I i just passed by it like not too long ago like i, I could say it like within the last month for real holy yeah. shit it's crazy how I, just just by the, the the one thing you just mentioned earlier again we'll see there like the menu and as well with with the popularity but like overall is that how you how you feel it is within the industry here in illinois Okay, so if this is our segue in a hoof, underground versus above ground market. All right. Trust me, my guy. We're gonna go back and forth. We'll we'll, we'll go on oh, topic. Yeah, yeah. On to, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, repeat that question one more time. So, like, how we just kind of were talking about the wake and bake, you know how, and the infused cafe, like. Pretty much how you're saying that one would have to worry about the menu being good and as well the popularity. Like, is that how it is within the industry overall? Like, is that how you see that within like events and stuff like that? So, for example, underground market, right? Depending on what level that they're at. 
you know, from the people that I've met, like, you got people that just start off or whatever and they'll put their stuff, like, on the table. And you got people that have whole, like, kiosk menus. You know? So it's it's that line that's slightly blurred now of what was differentiating the above ground market. Only real difference is it's honestly having a brick and mortar place. And that's where the whole thing comes into play on legacy marketers trying to become legal. Mm -hmm. And the issue that a lot of people don't know is those people are getting picked off. What I mean by that is if by chance they do put that money together, they could get towards the, the last bit of their time for, hey, here's your keys, here's everything, you're good to go because it is publicly viewable. So in other words, if you got way more powerful enemies, and by enemies, I mean opportunities, you don't even have to ever met these people. It's just more so of can we buy your license or no? So if you look at it from that, the whole thing of like having a social, <laughs> a socially equitable and fair chance across the board with this. Nah. I unfortunately know a little bit too much on that because I, I know certain people that like have a how do I know four different other people that, that have applied for licenses and got denied? Yet I know I'm sure, I'm sure there's a many because like that that application is very hard to, to get approved. I mean I remember yeah. it had to be like 10k out of pocket first and then it became like the lottery system which kind of I think is a little more helpful and better than you know having that that 10k up front and shit like that but the lottery system was bought that was a the whole issue where the first set of dispensary runners and everything kind of looked the way they did and then all of a sudden it was just oh so this said uh, dispensaries got bought by this person from let's say in sort of California here or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's it's crazy out there. Um but here's the issue that I really want to like tackle and talk about is the above ground markets like they're getting played off of certain aspects, right? Because from the above ground market, you got that by the strings of investors. By the below ground market, you have the people that are stuck in between trying to break into that. So if you so, got those bullying situations, it's not the best. You so get then, what I'm saying? Kind of, yeah. So pretty much is is it is everyone then just playing or it, how can I say it's better? Is, is, is everything in the industry then kind of in limbo then? Because how you're saying the top people or the MSOs are getting bought by these investors, of course, but then the other ground people, you know, with, with all these events and all, of course they're doing the most they can to get to, to the, not even just the event throwers. You got people that, that they don't even go to events. They have a, they, they grow stuff. They have literally everything where it's like, yo, no, their people can become craft growers or like they're perfect at doing rosin. Uh-huh. And sometimes they still get fucked over. Just think about it. Let's say you you damn good at growing. You have a team. You go and meet. I don't know. Don't quote me on this. We'll use. Okay. I don't know one of one of Burner's contacts, right? Mm -hmm. And reach out to you. Make a pitch talking about some. We'll pay you a thousand per piece. So it's like, bro, that's not even. It was, you said what a thousand per what? Like these years into this. No, I'm just using this as an example. Oh, like, yeah, but oh, I we'll could a thousand per unit. 
Oh, okay, and then okay. as a grower, like, yo, my people would put literal like sweat, blood, and tears into these the products. Yeah, yeah. And you're gonna insult us, but like, don't get me wrong. You want you want to meet your your profit margin. You want to meet your profit margin because that's the other illusionary thing. For certain companies and stuff like that, they don't even make as much money as you would think, think. that they do. With more so on merchandising. Is that why you got like all these different like big companies out in different states for for no, that? Like, perfect example. Just look at cookies. That money ain't being made just off of the weed. It's starting to catch up, but like, uh-huh. no, that money is made from. I. <laughs> Uh, it's in the, it's in the kitchen. But I literally have a cookies water jug that I got from Champs before. Uh-huh. I got a cookies backpack and uh, uh, they got um, merchandise, you know, like like bags, fanny packs. Like, yeah, I see that rolling trays. Yeah, yeah, I get you that. You know what I mean? So it's just like the same way on like, look at, look at we like the music industry. I know it's fucked up to say, mm-hmm. but if you look at it from that perspective. And it make a lot more sense. And it's crazy because I actually was talking to somebody too about that, and they kind of they wanted to put the weed industry in the perspective of how the music industry is like too, and and how it's it, is, it, it is. And it's kind of it's fucked up. It is to say it because you know it's not it's an industry where I, I keep kind of saying it over and over again. But it's like where one has to, where everyone has you know gets along. You feel me? Like we're all as one. We love love to smoke weed. You know, have a good time. For example, this will fuck with your head a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I know it's reality TV or whatever, right? But uh, Natalie Nunn from, from Bad Girls Club got a whole can- <laughs> cannabis line coming out. Okay. That's what's, that's cool. I, I didn't know that. Exactly, though. But you know what I'm saying? Like, Urkel. Urkel got his own cannabis line. The wrestler, the Godfather, got his own uh, cannabis line. Obviously, Seth Rogen. Yeah, uh, Seth Rogen, Ching Chang Chong, of course. You know, like what's another one? Uh, I forgot what the fuck comedian is that. Uh, it's killing me. Anyway, there's uh-huh. some fucking comedian that has they own like, like Mike Tyson. You know, the Tysons. Yeah, Tyson Moran, you know. Yeah. I'll do your thing, my boy. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's all about the branding. You know what I mean? It's all about have the greatest product. Like, I can be, like, let's say, for example, hey, I, I don't know, cook some of the best and few souffles ever, right? Mm-hmm. My money is going to cap out at a certain point with on how fast I can cook, right? Versus, okay, I have to now salary out and pay people and teach them on how to cook, right? That still may not hit out of black. That still may have me in red for like a year and a half or something like that. Not even going to get into details, funding and factoring and all of that, right? Yeah. So you have that factor. You got to figure out how to, like, diversify your money income or what's coming in. So it's like, okay, what do people like about it? All right, yo, here, let me pay $120 for this artist. Can you cartoonize me and, and some of my staff up into these 12 phrases? Here's how much I'll pay you out. 15% of the profit. Here's a contract for that. I just need like a week and a half turnaround time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's a little bit different. Because then at that point, you got a whole other different fresh product. And then people are looking like, oh, well, this isn't just some random thing. It's like what Arizona, perfect example. Arizona tea did that shit. They just had tea before. Then they moved into gummies. Mm-hmm. And after that, then it became legal, right? 
No, no, oh, Arizona yeah. State. I'm saying they, they they made like a bunch of like oh, oh, never mind. coats and stuff like that. Oh, now <laughs> St. Ives malt liquor actually became a cannabis brand. Crazy. That's that's a rabbit hole to, to check that out. Like uh, oh, so what? So you're telling me somebody that had a liquor brand had made their own cannabis brand now? That's more common than not. Look up some infusion drink. Wonder uh, eight. Texas started off as a beer company. Now they make a few drinks in Texas. In Texas, holy shit! Well, then again, uh, Texas just became uh, legal, but medicinal reason uh, why it's not recreational. So what's that? Everyone was like, "Fuck it!" If everything becomes legal. It's going to be great. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, and what I mean by no is what everyone doesn't understand. The moment that it becomes federally legal across 50 states or most of them, that means. What does it mean? The smallest amount of stuff, you're going down for Fetty charges. So, like, the smallest things, what would that be? Like, let's say, let's say, let's just so picture, let's say. Figuratively, we'll say, like, okay, an ounce or something. I know, it's like, wait, but if you decriminalize, yeah, you decriminalize it, and if you legalize it across the states, then that means if it's not governmentally, like, government, like, Within, brand, like the, uh, distributed, uh-huh. Yeah. So pretty much what? So then what these dispensaries then have to have like a limit of how much quantity they can... No, no, no. That's great. They're, oh. already, they're already playing a game. You know? Oh. I'm saying for like everyone else, like we're basically backtracking to the dark ages in a way. Yes. So like for the plugs then. Available anywhere, you know what I mean? Perfect yeah. example. Look, you can get like government provided bought cannabis from Alaska and it's pretty straight. You just need a hydro stone for it. <laughs> yeah. Like how we used to get like what is it? Uh uh government provided like peanut butter and shit from like the pantries. Oh what? we gonna be like that with weed, bro. Tell you it's gonna be crazy. Is it gonna be the best? No, uh-huh. is it gonna be the first? Probably. Oh, it depends. It depends on how bad that first year is gonna be. But so, 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 do you think if 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 cannabis becomes legally for like federally, let's say most states, you think it, it every like I guess economy wise or just in general or I guess crime rise. But I don't even want to mention crime because I think in general whether whether or not crime is always gonna be like liquor. To be honest, that's. that's a- that's the thing, though. Why do you? I I feel like it's two different things, though. It is, but, but you forget one big factor on why is even being like legalized. It's, it's not even a medical thing of it. It's the whole thing. The government is figuring out. Hey, how can we get our kickback out of this? You think getting that kickback? What? Yeah. That why they that's that's why they they taxing it on it too much. Yes and no. We're in Chicago. We've already. Well, it is know, an expensive city for for one. Yeah, it is. But then again, it's like it's 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 an in debt city. That's the thing that a lot of people don't realize about Chicago. Like our taxes are high because Chicago owe people money. It's not just. Chicago, like Illinois, owes oh, it's crazy. It's fucking bad shit crazy. Damn, that's that's just, that's just, that's something else. Then I don't know if you want to get get a little more deep into into that. That is a rabbit hole, to say the least. But like, how 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 deep, or like, what in what way do you think? Chicago or Illinois in general owes like 
Are we talking about like? Because, you know, back back in the day, Chicago was known for, like, a mob city, you feel me? Because we had the mobs and stuff. But, like, every time, like, that. Imagine if everyone owes each other, like, old money. But then you find out the people that was getting the old money owe old money. And think about it. How many other, like, people that have had businesses and stuff like that here, Mm -hmm. but they let it fall at the wayside because their their current like generation or something like that don't even give a shit about like like okay hey you could be the greatest like accountant in the city if your fucking kids two grandkids like oh no one wants to be a teacher and somebody else wants to be like I don't know a a cook at like fucking pillows or something like that. And it's just like, ah, uh, so who's going to like pick up the, the thing that makes us rich? And they're like, I don't want to be bothered by this. So, okay. Uh, I guess that's it for those set of buildings. Wow. Shit like that happens all the time. It doesn't have to be buildings, it could be like insert a business here, insert asset here. Yeah, or, you know, for certain properties, you feel me? And at the end of the day, I think what the front story is just, you know, just to convert it into something new or the majority is that's that's, that's overall the story, you know, like why one thing gets torn down for it for another thing to get built up back up. Well, that's the better end of the story, but you also got stories that like come to like an abrupt end, like let's say, for example, uh Leona's barbecue. You know, huh. Real Chicago is knowing that tragic ass story. And long story short, you know, drugs are bad. And the sun can get that balance and fucked up an entire franchise. Yeah, that's Same what I thing the cannabis every day. Yeah, right. And yet they still make it seem like it's fucking uh, worse than, or or worse, like like heroin or something, or LSD or cocaine, <laughs> Schedule One drugs. You feel me? When it's not mm-hmm. really, that's the sad thing about America is that we get uh, we just uh, get exposed to the pra- propaganda of whatever they want us to to know or just see. How how was the the three year tea break? No, oh, no, no. I took a tea break three years ago. Yeah, but oh, but like for how long? I think it was like a month. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I mean, yeah, I like yeah, there's stressful moments here and there. Mm-hmm. But I, I wasn't in a technically the same environment I was in now. I was moving into it. Mm-hmm. Well, it, so I took the tea break break a little bit before then. Uh, cause it was like I thought I was getting this other job or something like that, and it fell yeah. through. But uh, excuse me, I ended up getting that same opportunity later and didn't even have to stop. stop. <laughs> it was crazy. It was fucking crazy. Yeah. So, um, I would say it's kind of like let's say if you worked at a bar or something like that. And, you know, you stopped working there and now you work at a gym. If you like go and 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 hang out with those same people that you worked at with the bar, you would be fucking destroyed. Cause by like shot three, you're gonna be like, mm. mm-hmm. now, yeah, my metabolism is high. But this is beating my ass, you know? So I I like let's say if there's like I can see myself ritualizing, like, doing a tea break, like, do that shit for, like, Lent, if it's in March. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm doing that shit in April. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, no, hell no. That's why I'm taking it now in March, man, so I can be ready for April. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, shit. I, like, I, I try that shit, like, next year, honestly. Nah, um, Actually... I haven't. This is my first time taking one since like probably since 2018. To be honest, that's when I became oh, heavy, heavy. Yeah, uh, I started actually smoking when I was 
it's uh 16 bro like so just by a little bit just just a couple friends bro in high school yeah that's cool Um, but then i really really got into it when i was in college and uh, had a roommate and he's the one that kind of introduced me to dabs and ever since that like just been straight dabbing but like the o- overall yeah the overall uh moral story is pretty much like i just been just smoking pretty much non-stop since that and now i'm just you know what let me just take a tea break it's been a while how long uh you said you're just doing a month yeah yeah i'm just gonna do it a month of march that still works no for yeah. real like because when you bro when i say when you finally do dab you're gonna be like god damn no, I, I'm sure, because, shit, I remember my first dad, bro. That shit knocked me out, like, to sleep, bro. That shit was crazy. Yeah. That shit was crazy. Oh, my first dad, too, bro. I was I was already pre-high, already to smoking a blunt and shit. Hey, at yeah. least they didn't, like, try and give you, like, a fucking killer hot dad. Nah, he went, my roommate kind of kind of eased me on to it little by little. But... That's what we got in. You was a good You was a good hand. Cause like, man, I started mine off. That shit was funny. They, I mean, I I didn't watch it, mm-hmm. but like, still was like, like like fucking sitting on the couch like God. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just like yeah. shit. Like, <laughs> just like fuck. <laughs> like I know this guy is trying to kill me with his dad. But like I ain't no bitch though. Like I was like, oh, I was just like, oh God damn, that's mm-hmm. hot. I was like, mm-hmm. <laughs> shit, like... Face, and I'm just like, hey, don't, 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 don't throw your numbers off trying to bully me. Cause I'm just gonna take that nap. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm just, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. No. I mean I I put on uh hella people on dabs too. Uh hey, that's what I'm talking and... about. And like my co-host Jordan, uh, he he was uh, he's always been a flower guy. But ever since uh, I met up with him and we started, and I introduced him to dabs, he, he got his own rig. Then he he just been dabbing too. Mm-hmm. But I I personally love more dabs because you can take them inside your crib and it doesn't rake as much as like you were to smoke a, like a joint or a blunt in your crib, like. Like you'll have that 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 temporary, you know, a little stink if you have like something like gassy, but you know it'll go away within like I say like ten minutes or so, you know. Um, but yeah, so I see you got your Carta. I like that that top piece, bro. This is, that shit looked dope. How much? How much and, that was that? Uh, I think I got on sale for like two. Oh damn, that shit looks nice though. I fucks with that little eye. But uh, but yeah. So personally, my Carter, or my Carter, my puff coat right here is just chilling <laughs> with nothing but waiting for me. <laughs> um, I actually had a Carter too before. That was actually my first e rig. Yeah, it was a Focus V. I did not know how to use that bitch at all, bro. Um, until like I had to like YouTube it, and I was like, oh, I'm doing this shit all wrong. Yeah, that was. <laughs> <laughs> that that shit that that that, that card uh, I, I used to call it the cardi um uh that that, that lasts me like for a good good like almost half a year uh just because again it was like my first e-rig i just didn't know how to maintain it well and stuff like that but then you know i just recently picked up my cart my puffco um what was it like two years ago on the 420 cell got that bitch for 150 so psh- I'm so so glad. So so yeah, my guy. So let's actually talk about that, bro. I know when I when I first met you, bro, you had a dab table. Well, every every time I see you, you have a dab table. So you you the dab guy for sure. Yep, yep. I gotta teach people how to do dabs, man. That's that's my that's my main going thing. Like I don't even care about like because the way I started it, I had to be smart about that. It was just like. How can I be an underground brand ambassador? Easy. Not easy, but like, yo, do reviews for people, post out their shit. Obviously, don't don't make it hot for them. Just, just like, yo, I really love this 
designer. Oh, I love this flower or whatever. Mm-hmm. Boy, I used to be like, yeah, so I met this person that is very specific. No. No. Met this person at this show. Mm-hmm. If I even say this show, like I, I, I'll paraphrase, paraphrase or yeah, yeah. At this point in time, like honestly, vendors just hit me up, like, yo, we we sent this to you, or yo, I'm gonna drop this off, and sometimes they catch me off guard, like you, you ship what, like whoa, whoa. <laughs> But you know, that's that would be a box. But anyway, um, uh, uh, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll get we'll get back to the brand the brand rep too. But but just wanted to get with the car, the e rigs and shit. Uh, I'm gonna say I personally prefer the Carta, okay. the Carta too. I mean, um, and that's just because like the atomizer um is really really fucking efficient. Um, it's- I had uh, a easier time cleaning it up um don't get me wrong i have a puffco pro i actually even uh stand behind like this is one brand called three grams um owned by i forgot his last name but his name is josh uh he makes third party atomizers for a puffco that are fucking amazing mm-hmm. however uh shit i guess i burnt my puffco out so I gotta wait until the next time to like get it. It caught me off guard too, because I'm like, whoa, whoa, this ain't even an atomizer issue. This is just oh My shit. This is just, yeah, get a new one. <laughs> I was like, whoa. Oh. Uh, oh. That's one thing right that's yeah, that's one thing that why. scares me too. Cause like you could imagine like you thinking it's the atomizer, but in reality, like you 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 get a new one, you put it in, and if it still doesn't work, you'd be like, what the fuck? And then you just waste it of money. But then again, like it's a pro and con because then you have an extra one just in case for whenever you yep. buy the new one, you know. But I don't know. I I love e rigs. Uh, I feel I felt like once I really got comfortable and knowing how to use it, I I. <laughs> Still don't get me wrong, I love glass rigs, but like I just feel like the glass rigs be hitting a little more harder. It depends on which ones. Cause like I can use this one off the books, right? Uh the G Pen higher, because you can connect that to you know your 14 millimeter your digs and, and go from there. Uh the thing people gotta be careful with is with that. Uh, if you dip down your dab device, don't you don't have to like like scrape around like just we'll let it rest, let that shit melt off, put the cap on. The middle part is is like a metal base, but it has glass going up, and then it's an opening mm-hmm. so that. At like you know, the air goes through. There's no splashback. That middle thing can break. And then wait, are we talking about e rigs or or regular glass rigs? Oh, that's e rig. That's e rig. Oh, e rig. Okay, the okay. Yeah, the inside of it. Oh, okay. You know, you have to. You you really gotta like be mindful of it if you do get that device. Like be gentle um, with it. Um, uh, you know what? For for everyone out there, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because okay. I've learned the hard way that not, like not everyone treats stuff like the exact same. And what I think maybe like common yeah. hurt. Like, no, because I've seen people like put whole fucking grams in like the old puff coat and then be surprised when it didn't work and it's just like you need a 3D 3D chain for that one boy if you're gonna put a I'm whole like, OG people's doing that with like first year fucking launch puff coats like bro what do you what do you was like nah man it's puff coat it this, can't. Is before, like, this is the before the peak right the peak yeah peak shit. yeah oh my god Dude, that is hell but yeah, no, I, I, I like, I, I personally prefer the Carters too. Um, 
And then on top of that, like, uh, I feel like if we got to go, like, with the best, uh, like, if you could name three. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. Because, of course, the Carter 2 is on my top, right? Because, but, but then again, like, like when I met you, like, and just oh, several other people. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. Yes. So, uh, right? Yeah. But there's a mini version of it. Now, the thing is, mine's that I have the glass, like uh-huh. this, right? like, imagine this, but this broke. So it doesn't work right now or it does still? No, no, this does. I'm saying oh. I have a smaller one. Oh, okay. The Dr. Dabber XS. Now, that one, mm-hmm. that is my number two. Because, like, you can get that for, like, 180 I mean, you could pay a little bit more if you want the the Whiskily for one. But, I mean, hey, the Carter, the Carter 2 is, like, what? 250 if you know someone, and 300 if you don't. Dr. Dabber XS is... One twenty. If you know somebody, and like a max one eighty, if you don't, still, that's not that bad though. One eighty around there. It's a brainless device. I mean that in a in a great way. Like I can leave that device for the most part. Like four out of five people, what only one of those people would fuck that thing up, and that's just that of like, oh, I'm gonna blow it, and it's like, no, I told you to do that. Yeah, because you'd be telling right. telling people how to how, how to smoke it and all, you know, like when when you'd be doing these these dab uh, bar bars, but I be but, trying, but it's, it's sometimes people just still like, <laughs> yeah, they be some be smoking, inhaling it hard and shit. I'm mean, like, whoa, whoa, relax, relax. Inhaling <laughs> it hard. That's the other thing too. It's like, okay, yo, if you're using like a regular rig or something like that, and you're using like a you know you, you hard like, cast, it, yeah, you're just like. And it's like, yeah, and you're looking at like three fourths of the dab just go into the fucking, like just go through the whole rig and shit. And it's just like, <laughs> and then you wonder why there's no more after the second hit. <laughs> nah, but okay. So here's two things. I know there's oh, a shit. The last one, my bad. Dragon egg. That's the other. Uh. The number three by Luca. Yeah. So that one's like a hundred dollars. So that way you got people who like we'll say two fifty versus one fifty versus a hundred. Boom. So okay, so I know there's there's a shit ton of brands for e rigs and all and with all different prices and all too. But like it in all I'm not trying to make it too broad, but like out of all of the ones that you just mentioned right now, is there a a difference in between all of them written yeah. really really yeah, really that's what I'm like it's literally down to, to what's your experience level the cheapest on down to like here's the most expensive but the most you can do them because you could you could put bluetooth to this right uh-huh. but the first entry level that you can even get on sale on between 60 sometimes 80 dollars right yeah it's a dragon egg you just you flip the top, you, you load it, you know, one, two, three, four, five. And let turn it on, it heats up. It got three different heat settings. And you could just hold the damn button and cook it and live feed it while you hitting it. Uh-huh. We even got the little, that at the bottom, like, and this thing is sturdy, you know? Like, I don't got to worry about, like, oh, this falls is going to break. So this is perfect entry level. And then when you move on to Dr. Dabber XS, um, I would show my broken one again. It has the broken side of glasses. Mm-hmm. So pointless of showing people. Well, now fuck mm-hmm. it. This so that people can see like at least the black base of it. All right, for sure. Got this right here. I mean, again, this is the big one compared to the small one. Obviously, this is broke. So, you know, but. This thing easy to fucking use, super easy to use. Oh, yeah. It's 
T charger as well. Uh huh. You can charge it in about like. Well, honestly, I've been charging my mind mine to like thirty five minutes to max like an hour. And it's every car thing, you know what I mean? Uh, there's that one and. Self-explanatory. You can even change the the colors that you want on this thing. So honestly, so like, let's say for myself, uh, which one would you recommend me for moving up to from a uh, Puffco? Like, if I want to explore some new, try which one? Just get a Carter too. Carter I mean, too. they have a new one now called the. Uh, is it? It's their. It's their headbutt. The was it to Puffco for for the the Rome? I think it was called. You know, they just wanted to like completely downsize this into like a handheld. Like you don't you don't have to like it's almost like a pro- the proxy. Yeah, basically it's their proxy. Okay, you know, just for the Carta. Yeah, oh, shit, I need to see that real yeah. quick. Check out Focus V's website, like. It's it's pretty lit. I can't wait to get mine. You know, um, obviously I you know I can wait on it. Like I know the concept of it. It's mm-hmm. all their their head nod to uh the Versa Go, which give me give me uh hold on give me one second. Look, I'm gonna share my screen with you so you can oh. see too. Give me one. You're talking about so it's, is it is it this right here? Yo yo yo. Right here. That's the new. Uh huh. The yeah, Aries. Oh, for two thirty. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, and that's where you're gonna put the wax in there. Yeah. It, it reminds mm-hmm. me of of the pen actually of of like of a dab pen. You feel me? Yes. That's how it reminds me of. Wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm excited about it because you can still put turp pearls in there. Oh, really? Oh, that's cool. That's that's yep. cool. That's uh. So that's a one. Just trying to minimize this real quick. All right. So then, uh, other than I guess the the Bluetooth, and I know for some, uh, e rigs, there's the app. The app you can download to your phone. What uh-huh. what other what other things? The the more that uh, E-Rig costs, what other f- features does it does does it come with? Other than I those two, I don't really care about about capacity and stability. Like you, you don't care. You said? I gotta log in my phone to see where the hell your temperature is at. I got a problem with you. I don't gotta do that with this. I can uh-huh. connect my Bluetooth to it, but I haven't done it in over like. Two years. I had to think about it. I really had to think about that. Apparently, you can even put like little mini videos playing in the screen. Now, the cool thing is you can definitely like change your layout, if you will, when it comes to this. Like, I mean, like the like color, the, color? Videos, uh-huh. the flickers, all of that. Like, you you can fuck with that. You can really change it up. So, you know, some cool shit. But you know, does it really like? Yeah, again, I stand behind it because of stability. I only really had to change the atomizer out like once, and that was more of a like, oh, here's this top that had like a a water issue, and it blew back in. It was just like, oh. other than that, uh-huh. wow, that's yeah. crazy. That's good to know because I actually for my uh. Puffco, within the two years, I felt like I had to change it more than probably five times, bro. And that's probably, I think that's because like I be diving a lot, like every single day. But then again, like I I clean it, you feel like every week, you know, like maintain it. Try to maintain that's it. The case, this thing should be dead. And Weapon? let me put like this: I said that's the case. This thing should be dead. What does that number say? Was it twelve fifty five? Yep. Uh, wait, twelve fifty five dabs. You taking on that? It counts your dabs. Yes. 
What? <laughs> it only got reset once after I changed out the atomizer. Other Ooh, other than that, okay. I'm going to be in the twos. Wow, that's fucking cool. And that's, that's the card of two? Yeah, yep. I got to give me that one now. I shit. told you. I, I got to give me you. that one now. It's, it's, it's slightly cheaper to get heady pieces with the oh. card because everyone else gets puffed up. That is true. Everyone does go with Puffco. But why do you think so? Is it because of the marketing of Puffco? Is right. that why? Yes. They had a whole festival yeah. before. That's which is coming Puff- Puffcon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, you said, what? It's coming here? Or, or, or it's coming no, soon again? I was just use it as an example. Like, that oh. was gold. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and, and I want you to name, like, is that the 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 comparison though, like the the <laughs> rivalry? You can say the quote unquote rivalry between the E rigs, like the Carter and the Puffco. Yeah, so that's then, right. So then, like, why? I wonder why. Well, what's 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 going on with Carter then? Like, why isn't they trying to do some some similarities to to this Puffco? <laughs> they keep it to their their plan and just focus on their device, not their marketing. Ah, uh, okay. So I'm guessing let the the people or the users experience tell their tell their experience on how it is and shit. Yeah, they're the Adidas. Yeah, literally, I can see that. Puffco the Nike. Yeah, <laughs> Puffco's the Coca Cola and and uh, P- Carter's the Pepsi. <laughs> nah, we not doing that. We oh, not doing good that. Nah, come on. <laughs> I don't even drink Pepsi. No. no. The one is Mickey D's, the other one is BK. Okay. No. Can we we make Carter Wendy's at least? Wendy's? Okay, okay, okay. Okay, BK, bro. That's. You know what? (laughs) This may get me in trouble. And I'm going to say, I love this sponsor before I say this, okay? (laughs) But everyone knows. The BK of the E-Rigs is the high five duo. Why is that? <laughs> they mind you, I'm not too much into the E-Rigs. Price, so. They haven't changed anything. They haven't changed nothing. I'll just leave it at that. Okay, it's like well, how many how many products have they put dropped already? Just the high five duo, and they got like a line of glass. Now the glass is actually pretty fucking straight. They do uh e nails as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I do like how they run their e nails. It's just it's like also having an e nail slurp turper is quite the learning experience. I I don't know. How people just be stably just doing that shit, and not cleaning my OCD tendencies. Is just like. This is making me panic. <laughs> <laughs> Trash. You can't, it's not like you can like take a hot ass email applicant off from the glass and then dunk it and then just put it back on and be like, okay, I'm just gonna clamp this back up. Like, no, you gotta turn the shit off, wait for the cool down. And then no man. Yeah, so it's a whole process. I mean, most people just use it for like like a one-time thing it until like the next time until oh. they don't that shit and then they worry about like cleaning it later but if you if it's like a e-rig like a, it's a e-slurp turper like fuck dude this i'm just thinking about all the fucking gloves and then it's oh that'll, that'll fuck with me after a while like that's just not gonna spin after a while mm-hmm. i don't know like if it's just like let's say for just us like Talking to her like I don't know, like a thirty minute session or something like that. Okay, whatever, I guess. Yeah. But like, if it was like this session, and we're both just going back and back, it's like, bro, you basically gotta like have it run super high and hope that the fucking turp rolls don't explode. Damn, might as well just kill the device that you're at it. <laughs> this song is like way but like again, like let's say for example, you just want to set this up to have like a, a little mini light such like I'm gonna do some some live rods or some rods or whatever. Yeah. And 
Nothing too just, crazy, you know. No? Just, just like yeah, like I'm doing three at max. Okay, I'm done. Uh-huh. Clean it up and shit like that. They that's cool, you know. But when you do the the, the whole thing, where it's just like I'm bringing this out, dash. Uh-huh. Hey, no, don't do that. That. Shit, that shit gonna break. <laughs> it's not gonna break. It's just gonna like cleaning is gonna be fucking gross, and then you're gonna have to use a torch to clean it. And it's like, oh no, never mind. Hell no, that's too much. It's still point. a piece of glass. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Build up. You know that wears that wears down. Uh, uh, the glass itself. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah, you start to see it crack up. It's tough within time. Yeah, I feel yeah, you. Yeah. I feel you, my guy. But. Let let's go back to to what we were kind of just talking about earlier. Well, you kind of mentioned it, which is the the brand rep. So how how is your experience within the underground market then? Um, as so a brand how, rep, mm-hmm. how I ended up uh, starting off as a brand rep didn't even really have as much as to do with the underground market as as it did of being a the weirdest segue ever. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. Um, Harempants.com was like one of my first sponsors. And then after a while of being like that brand ambassador, you know, yeah, yeah I started selling their clothes. Did they but just hit you up? Or like, how did you get in contact with them? I just reached out through Instagram, to be honest. Like um, their, their page yeah. or whatever? You just DM yeah. them? We just we just chopped it up from there. Uh, they've had like representatives already mm-hmm. from here. Uh, shout out to Binky. Yeah, no, that man is super talented. Like he went out to Thailand and everything. Like, yeah, but uh, that was how that kind of started. And then it was like during COVID, where I was hopping in on like lives here and there. I helped out coordinate some shows here and there. I started pop out the shows. Uh. You know, the rest is basically history. And then from there, I kind of like faded to the background. Uh, I'm just focusing on a nine to five for a bit. Then got back into like selling clothes, consultation, uh, doing dad bars. I, I took a like a step back of like you know the older days and it's just I'm just more like, yo, I'll do the dad bar. Uh-huh. Hey, here's consultation on like if you want to learn about like dabs and stuff like that. And honestly, it, it it picked up steam here and there that I was not expecting on like it's like okay. So then, quick question, my guy. So then you so pretty much what you got paid for for like for example the smoke responsibility one. No, 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 no. That was kind of like a combination kind of thing. But I'm saying on well, how the, the above ground market works. Oh, so you have the basically they they set up the dabs and everything, like send in a representative and you know you had an opportunity. Sometimes you get paid for it. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes it's just like, hey, here's this you got weed, you feel me? That's for you, whatever. And it's like, all right, cool. Just, I guess, keep it done. You know, just a dab? It, it, he said, he said, just a dab. No, some dab. Like, oh, okay, okay, okay. I thought you meant like a dab. one dab. I'm like, like damn, shiny. <laughs> no, it's like, yo, if it's like a rap rep or something like that, hey, here's like these two jars and like these four eighths or something like that. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like they'll pay you with cannabis. Yeah, I feel you on that. Yeah. It's either, and sometimes it's both money and that. Um, I still plan to get like right back into it. Mm-hmm. It's just I took like a little bit of break because I had to do a whole bunch of other like family stuff and personal stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I, I seen that. I mean, after, you know, keep in touch with you and all like in general just by you know watching the feed and all like you you were you know popping out in these different events mm-hmm. and um i seen that you were like most uh working with like mid mid lane is it mid mid, mid, mid lane yeah so okay. um, t- talk, t- talk t- tell, tell us about that like how how did you start working and like how what's what going on with that an event for 
again, both the underground and above ground market to like actually like work together. Mm-hmm. Not even work together, but like at least have like a face and a name towards each other. And then from there, like, yo, can we just play some games together? Can we just do some dabs together and expand it to where like, yo, if the above ground market wants to help out with that, like we go from there. The thing was, it was a shit ton of conflict of interest. I'm not going to get be messy about that. I'm just going to respectfully say it was a couple of business differences, not the venue. Mm-hmm. I, I can set up an event today if I had the capacity for it. Like at mid lane? Me, yeah, like we're good. Okay. It was just more so, again, read between the the uh, viewers. Uh-huh. Hey, other people's work ethics are shown. Enjoy their events. That's all I'm going to say. And then, I um, you didn't mind switching up. I got some projects brewing, but that's all I'm going to say. Um, again, like just by, because even myself, um, and the, and, uh, my team within Canada Vibe, we we were again we popped out to events and stuff like that, but like we kind of had to calm down too. Just again, uh, everyone just time time schedule wasn't kind of the same as before, and everyone at some point again is doing their own thing. You, you feel me? Like if, if it comes back together, it comes back together. Um, but what I'm trying to get to is from what I'm seeing is that it's just small groups within a community, one big community. And it's something where I'm like, from what I see it from the back standpoint, and maybe it's because one, I'm not too involved or not, but it's like, like not trying to say names or not too, but it's like, why is it like once that certain people, whatever work together and now it's like, they're not, you feel me? Like, like we were just day ones, you know, working, trying to, I guess, talk it over and see like we were all, you know, go looking for the same opportunity and all, but then as time progressed and all, now everyone's going their own separate ways, and it's like, why? You know, like because they didn't get what they wanted. See, at that time, I was trying to create an environment so that yo, the venue owner can make his bread, but also we we have a spot that literally both sides of the market can beat up put all of their shit off to the side and kick it and oh here's the dad bar you know like and I feel like we kind of both are are knowing who uh, who are we talking about or stuff like that but again it's like but it's just like an example you know but even within that is like I see it as, as as me being a participant in these events like not mm-hmm. too long ago, like I was talking to to another person in the show, and it's like we were talking about how if you were to walk up to somebody's circle at these events, they'll look at you weird, like how the fuck are you and talking to us, or like how are you get in our group. And when reality is like we 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 all talk about it's like we all want to get high, we're all trying to have a good time, you know. Yeah, no one wants to deal with high school shit. Like when you're literally going getting you're going out of the house. Mm-hmm. The smoke weed. So it's like if me as a a thirty a something goes out of the house. Now mind you, I I I can I, I can smoke in my house. Mm-hmm. If I make that choice to leave from my comfort to go to a venue to smoke somewhere, and you see weird like drama going on, yeah, no, that's that's weird. You're not gonna. Even if if you even know the details of it, no one's going to fucking want to deal with that because it's like, yo, I just, I honestly just came out here to chill. I don't even know what I'm dealing with right now. I don't want to necessarily know. Can 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 I just buy, like, my tokens and, and do this dab? Yeah. It's like one of those things where, like, you just got to kind of cut the fat kind of and just move on. I can say the one experience that I wish I learned a little it got under my skin a couple of times and I definitely snapped off and like let 
my business partners at the time know I'm not that guy. I understand I am very professional and I'm nice. Uh-huh. But I'm not even the type of person to really like bring up where I'm from and all that. It's just um people in Gage Park don't play that. So it's like if I'm respectful mm-hmm. and you're talking a whole type of different fresh on my phone when we're literally like, yo, I'm trying to make this event work. Especially if I'm letting people know, hey, I'm going to be delayed. I'm dealing with Sir, X, y, and Z, yeah. If I'm the one that's the reason that we had a venue, it'd be different if I'm like, oh, I'm looking for diplomatic immunity. Don't ever tell me whatever I'm wrong. No. This is the type of stuff like, yo, everything is set up. Go ahead and set up. I'm running 30 behind. Mm-hmm. Yes, I already talked with the owner. Here's where the other vendors are. And you get weird passive aggressive shit from time to time, like, hey, do you even talk to your people? And it's like, what do you oh, the vendor reached out to you first before me. Oh, I didn't respond in ten minutes because um I was at work. Come on, man. We don't do that. And then when you check one of them, the other one is punching up from behind to be the the man. And like, no, I, I, I. So then, so then I guess his, what the question is, what I'm going to ask you is, should one be careful then here or not? No, dude, like people read stuff through fashion. Okay. What I mean by that is in this market, you will always deal with either gatekeepers or people that feel like they, hey, let's push these numbers, or hey, what about my brand's future? Which is actually a valid question on both, right? Mm -hmm. But if you lose your identity as well as either respect from others or uh, not even that. If it comes off as volatile or ingenuine, people are just looking at you as like just the venue. And that's the one thing I do not want. Like I, I still like if, if people choose to like work with me, mm-hmm. it's like, oh no, no. I I know his work or I know how he is. Yeah, like you 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 like you can say like you've talked to him off the record and stuff like that. Like you like you guys are know each other. You guys are kind of like business partners, but they you know each other. I I understand what you're trying to get at. Yeah, I'm one of the few people to where people have definitely like flipped a be like ah, I don't I don't work with him. Be like an enemy or whatever. Two months later, oh hey man, oh man, it's good to see you at the event. I'm just like. Don't 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 talk to me unless you're trying to collab with a priceless. And that's just like the experience that you've you've just gone through, huh? One of. One of. But that's the most that's the one I can give to people, let's say, if they want, even if they want to do events from the above ground market. Mm-hmm. You gotta oh. And then, how, so how is that then with the above market then? And with these events? <laughs> About the same, except it's more so you're reaching out to sponsors and making a venue appealing enough where you can like project numbers. So pretty much they just want uh, like events or people that they know that it's worth their time or, or that they know they'll bring profitable clientele yeah. to them. Mm-hmm. Which that's fucking bogus and sad. You don't think so? What did I teach you about cookies? It's all marketing. And unfortunately, like, no matter how we paint it, 
at the end of the day, mm-hmm. business is business. It is business is business, my guy. But the thing is, like, should it be I like that for this? You, though, it is fucked up. But, I totally agree with you on that. But my again, but my question is, should it be like that though? And is and and if it's and if it's this the same environment, whatever, is it around throughout the the states where weed is legal too? Is it how it is like that? Like for example, California, Michigan, New York. At the end of the day, it's you got to think of it this way: it is marketing. Mm-hmm. Perfect example, right? Look at Tyson Brand. Now, for the smokers out there, if you've ever had camo wraps, you remember the little period of time of when Future Roller's logo was on the camo wraps, right? Now, Mike Tyson had brought, bought, you know, like, yo, I got Future Roller. Oh, we're going to have to run some other ones out. So that was when it seemed like the, the recipe had changed up on the camera wraps before and it tasted kind of like asses because that was like the last sit point. They changed the recipe over, but it was literally while like this as well as the how you say they had to run that stout out before they presented camel wraps under the Afghan hemp burn. After the time passed, then they was able to switch the recipe back. That's the that's the package, the white package, right? Hemp wrap. Yeah, with the, the camo on it and, and stuff like that. You and got the, like the blueberry gold. one. And the, is it like the gold yeah. lettering? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So okay. now, yes, that is how it was before. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's also why. Mike Tyson raps are literally sold by the one for like fucking two fifty <laughs> versus yeah. camel wraps you can get for like you know like three for, yeah like or like for vi- vibes like the vibe cones that you could get like like um vibe like, cones are I, pretty cool. yeah but but like uh, I'm just getting the price from my smoke shop that I go to because I could get like the the specials like for two for five bucks like two packs of of six or three pack uh, like two packs of a six pack or two of a three pack five, five cones for like five bucks flat mm-hmm. but, but, but like if I I think for one is like a dollar or two dollars something I think or three I'm, I'm not mistaken but, but yeah so damn but but over like, it is crazy bro. But is there a way that we, that I guess, us as the people within the community can change that? Or is it just, I guess, w- of how the, the one is within one one's business? Uh, no, like, because, and the reason why I say this, right, is mm-hmm. because. Like, is there a way we can also make this better? Now, yes, but that's more like kind of like a semi-Michigan approach that comes down to, like, the community in regards of like, okay, hey, we, we hit it to a point to where everyone's starting to grow, whatever, make their attempts to grow their own plants and they're trading. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like that's the only way I could see that like shaking up like com- the commercialism of everything or the capitalism of everything. But other than that, no, people do want to turn off their brain, go to a dispensary and pick things. And then you got people that are completely like trained up underground wise to where they they don't trust the dispensary, but they'll they'll trust the roll of a dice on if they're either gonna get shorted or not, or if they they're getting anything good, good thing or not. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. You know, but then also at the same time you can go to the dispensary and get something that could be molded. Right, yeah. Or something so that's expired like, and shit. Grow your own shit. <laughs> but the thing is now you can't. <laughs> Basically, you know, uh, or, or like, again, it's like knowing that community, knowing who can grow, knowing all of that. Like, because not I everything. I feel like that's too much. I feel like that for one, I think, isn't that too much? Like, yeah. shouldn't you come into a community knowing you, you're you're good, you're secure? 
think about how many communities like kind of start off in theory with that, but never like stick with the word. Yeah. yeah. But I don't you know. see, look, you like, I don't know about that one, Chief. <laughs> We can try to play that one up, but I don't know about that one, G. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's crazy, bro. Like, I so what? So is it like we just one whole loop then loophole? Like it just continuously goes in a cycle? Like yeah, because at the end of the day, you got the old heads just like washing their books until they croak, and then you got the other people that's like using failing. You know, businesses as tax write off. I, I can keep going on and on about mm-hmm. that. But also, it's in Chicago, too. So, that good fucking luck. Is this so everything? Overall, so, overall, uh, for you, my boy Dank, do you, for you pro- personally, do you still you still stick around with the underground market or you or you shop uh, above more like the dispensaries and stuff like that? Why not both? Because I know if I'm out of state, I love to like visit dispensaries out there and try their stuff. You know what I mean? But also sometimes underground market, if it's in the area, in and out and safe. Mm-hmm. Cool, you know? Just some vendor that randomly reached out to me or something like that. It's like, yo, we've dabbed before and on on live, I'm like, oh shit, that's you, you know. Like, yo, I gotta be at this Airbnb by this time, but I can meet you outside the gate. It's like, yeah, review this, and I'm like, oh shit, okay, cool. But people just watching and wondering, like, how I like mm-hmm. <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> Actually, being humble and getting to know people, mm-hmm. like for everyone out, like if you truly care about not just cannabis but like the industry and stuff like that, yeah. Stop getting to know people just for free shit. That's not what that is. That's not what this ever was. Stop fake befriending people for free information. Stop just wasting people's time. Like, these are still people. Vendors aren't gods. Vendors aren't, like, these super villains and it's even ghosts with cannabis brands sometimes man like i love some of them are trash because of the judgment of their higher management but then you got the workers that end up suffering because of it i I can go down a list with that but i'm not going to because why 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 aren't you going elite man if Say, say at least one, one. People can feel slighted. They will come at you faster than a vendor that 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 you said too much and they got it out for you. Let that sink in. Yeah, it's man, it's crazy out there. It is crazy out there. So you're saying that you got people out here listening and like, well, not of course. Just, but in general, like, let's say for example, if I was like. To, I'll just throw out a random one and nobody like you know likes GTI, you know, and just leave it there. Mm-hmm. I can keep going down the list, but people that's watching this, they know, they know, they made it this far to this point. Which thank you, by the way, guys, for like supporting Cannabis Podcast. Oh, I appreciate like, it. Been, like hammering away at this project for the longest. So I feel honored that I'm finally on it. Uh-huh. And, you know. <laughs> no, hell yeah, bro. We, we just talking, bro. But we actually talking facts. So, um, but uh, most definitely. I mean, but I, I'm not too sure, man. I mean, with this cannabis industry, it's just like, I don't know. You got to be, 
Don't lose your heart. No, I'm, it's I'm a lot not, of bro. Don't lose your heart. I'm Tell not. I, I feel like you know it. You, you see it in me, bro. You see it in me. The, the potential love that we got here for the plan and the industry. The, the tip of the iceberg. You you not even like like you, you still got like this 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 what like it's past the camera. You still got so much further to go into like in a deep dark like review farmers when you can man i'm telling you every other cannabis farmer has a story and if you can review like marketing ambassadors and stuff like that for like the legal markets and shit like that man i'm telling you like if if you see like when certain pop-ups and stuff are gonna happen like Uh let's say for example days off and stuff like that yeah Yo, man, like, get those contacts of telling you some of the stories and stuff that you hear that they can say without, you know. Yeah, yeah, without worrying, worrying and shit like that, huh? Wow. They're, work, they, they're way cooler than you would think, like, in regards to, like, approachability. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? And... I'm sure they'll they'll sit and talk with you. The, the professionalism around y'all, where it's like I I can tell, like you know, like it was the first time me and y'all. I I didn't I didn't sense BS. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Some people I meet at events here and oh no, you you could like feel the BS on them. And it's just like I I don't have like three hours of my my life to waste on this. You know, versus <laughs> I am happy I'm here. <laughs> no, I appreciate it, Broski. And, uh, and that, that's how it, how I'm keeping it. I want to keep it, you know, within our pod, uh, just a, a place where we can all, you know, just relax, talk, uh, no filters, bro. Literally, that's one thing I hate is putting on a filter on. Um, Cause in reality, bro, this, this part yeah. is, is something to smoke too, but as well, I want people to hear shit that they don't have the chance to hear often. You feel me? I feel that. I'll dab to that. Hell yeah, bro! Take 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 one for the for 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 the can of vibe. <laughs> um, but uh, as as you're gonna take one right now, my guy. Um, I know we have uh, just I think one more topic left we haven't got to, and it's a, a topic that actually I haven't even really gone too deep into lately. When it's it's a uh, mental health, bro. Ooh, I love that topic. So, and to be the ender too is the shit. And it's, it's to be what again? Sorry. I was saying for that to be like the last topic is pretty oh, cool. Oh yeah, bro. Oh yeah. Let's get a little deep, uh little deep deepsters. That's actually what uh got me really, really, really into like cannabis. Because I actually smoke it for uh my CPTSD. Mm-hmm. And my uh, ADHD. Yeah, I know, right? I'm a letter boy. Jesus Christ. <laughs> nah, man, you got it. Nah, but you, hey, as long as it's it's helping you, my guy, you know, just yeah, it gets you through the day. Like, um, I remember I was watching this little clip, uh, with uh, Seth Rogen did a pod, and he was talking about like why he smokes every day and he, he was mentioning it on like how it's more of like it helps him through his journey and stuff of life mm-hmm. and it's like i kind of kind of see how how it is like like it's more than just what it, what we kind of what the majority of the people think is one is a recreational drug you know uh again it's 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 a medicine too uh, mm-hmm. it could be a remedy uh, so there's so many different ways too that you can little do you know that cannabis could could be involved in and be an alternative use for many different things. That's my main biggest point. <laughs> I feel like cannabis. <laughs> is the ultimate <laughs> Trojan horse. Um, for people getting into their mental health, if used correctly, but also my can vary. Uh huh. If not everyone can like, you know what I mean? Yeah, because cannabis is not meant for everyone either. The two, so that that's the little thing to it. You know, like, um, 
But overall, like, coming from one's perspective of, like, you know, going through through some some shit, too, you know, with mental health and all like that, you know, especially within guys, you know, uh, guys overall. But, of course, like, like the people of color, you feel me, where we're destined to, like, just hide that shit, you know, brush it off, not really express yourself. The stigma is breaking down slowly. Which it is. Yeah, really, which it is. It's it, it still, really I is. feel like it's still, it's still treated like a joke uh-huh. by some people. But like, that comes from a place also from trauma. Just think about it, right? If it's like opposite sex to opposite sex and stuff like that, one side feels unheard. Hmm. The other feels unheard, right? If you had like one side is like embracing the other and you absolutely despise like like let's say for example it's like how it's like people see dudes with like our brotherhoods and stuff like that, or not even just brotherhoods, like men have like emotional relationships as well. Mm-hmm. Uh just like how like Women have bonds of point is they're different, but they're similar. And I feel like rather than each side like embracing the opposite side and then seeing like or oh, certain things or how they correlate, we hyper focus on our pain that's caused by the opposite sex, completely missing the point, rather than like, wait. Was you heard about this other? Was you heard about this other? Thing? Yeah, but how do we get here? What as men made us say, "Hmm, I'm gonna do this anyway." Now <laughs> he said, it's hmm. a shorter I'm version, like, you know. No, but I get you. I get you on that. Yeah, I, I, but go on, huh? No, no, I'm saying it's like it's the shortest version. Of like uh, you know, when sometimes dudes be like, "Yo, you, it's okay. You, you, you just thought what you did. It's okay." And then you got girls like, yo, you got caught up in your heart. But both are somewhat of the same. So it's at the end, it's like it's one's not, well, is it one's fault, but not really? You feel me? Because like how you're saying, like. The fucked up thing is most of our stuff, uh most of our issues, no one wants to talk about that, but most of our issues are caused by us. Now, we have the whole thing on, like, environmentally, yo, it's the cause of this, or, yo, this is a Rolodex effect, but for, for the most part, I'm not I'm not saying shit that's not in your control, like, oh, well, so, someone hit you with a car, and then someone's like, well, that's your fault. Well, like, yeah, that doesn't mean? make sense. Yeah, yeah, I get you on that yeah. one, yeah. <laughs> oh. But, like, I understand, like, let's say for exam- example. A guy, you know, let's say you're dating somebody or whatever, and you get caught up because you cheated on someone. Again, that, that I understand where, like, if you didn't even do that to begin with, this would have never even happened. Mm, yeah, so. I feel like, okay. When men can be reactive, Sometimes we, it's like, in the heat of a moment, it's like, okay, the reaction is had, but then it takes like a day or so, or sometimes it can just take like 30 minutes or whatever, but it's like, damn, okay, I, I see you two months, right? But it's a, it's a bit of a delay versus, you know, women, they, they wait on that sometimes. They boy, they'll catch you. They'll catch you unexpected, bro. <laughs> I just like, to catch you unexpected. I'm saying like, man, a woman's scorn versus a dude's revenge is two different things. But uh, yeah, you're right. It's two different things. But it could at at the same time, it could just like simultaneously just hurt hurt whoever oh the damage is 
yeah, yeah. Change the people once that happens. So that's the other thing. You got you got people out there that's like triple stacked, like in in scar tissue and shit like that. Like hell, I can say oh, I'm definitely one of them. Like, bitch, yeah, I'm cool. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot of stuff that man, I from all the stuff that I've been through in the past, plus other stuff that I'm just just like getting through and stuff like that from from the holidays i got a shit ton of healing i gotta do so it's to a point where it's like i don't feel like yo i i i really need to actually get this together Mm -hmm. and i don't feel comfortable dating right now and the thing that sucks is it's affecting one of my other friendships right now. And I'm like, damn, I actually love this girl. But I can't keep. Because it's you hurting know? you? I just mean. I mean, yes. Uh-huh. But it's it's more so of a like. The best way to describe it is like, let's say, for example, if you catch a flat on your t- like uh, on on your car, right? Mm-hmm. And you're in the e-way. You got two choices: are you gonna pull over, change that tire, and keep going, or are you going to try and push it? I'm, I'm choosing to to pull over and fix that tire. Yeah. Now if that's making me late to something or something like that. You just gotta no. let it go then at that point, right, my guy? I mean, like, no. I understand that because so, that... How would you risk the safety and integrity of the car as a whole. Uh-huh. Imagine if you're running on a, a flat. What if you swerve, you hit something? What if you, you know? Yeah. Um, and it's, it's like, or or another, I guess, another way we can say it is like if you get a cut and you're bleeding, you know, you don't, you don't want to. You know, keep. I guess. How do I say it? Oh no! I think I just got myself real quick. <laughs> but I'm. I think you're understanding my what I'm trying to get to. <laughs> yeah, you you got you got to clean that up first, man. Yeah. And, and like, it's it's you just can't pour from a cracked cup. What was that? You can't pour from a cracked cup. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah. So you, uh, you need to patch it up, you know. Yeah, you do. Yeah. But I feel like I, don't, I think in general, not just men, but I think as well with women, it's like we have, I think, a certain point or limit where I think we all say where it's enough is enough. Like you gotta take care of myself. Like, nope. Like yeah, I understand. Um, you you might be want to be with somebody, uh, and you truly have them feelings and all. But if you kind of do see that it's not really working out and all, but yeah, you're still trying to put your whole potential energy to this. Like it's like uh, another example is like, let's say it's not the car, it's a bike. You're mm-hmm. pedaling hard on a bike that on a wheel that needs air. You're getting tired. You get, and you still, you know, pedaling, struggling to get to that state air in station to get that air pump, like, and it, it's not gonna work because both both things aren't working at the same time. Only one is. And at the end of the day, I feel like it's sad to say because at the end where you realize everything is where you're at. I think you lost it. You're at your lowest. Thing is, it's over. And it sucks because it's like in that that example and stuff, like I probably ain't even with them. Mm-hmm. It's literally like I still haven't gotten over everything that's happened. And but it's like I know it's happening to them, mm-hmm. but it's just like, yo. You're just dealing with it now at the moment. No, no. More so like uh, none of this would have like happened if they weren't around me. 
I feel like you know it, I mean? so I it's do, like, but isn't that how sometimes we think though? Let's say, no, let's say, like, no. You think at that person's lives before the the chaotic couple uh-huh. of months, and it, it literally turned into a lemony snicket book. You know what I mean? It's like, yo, I I I can't I can't say that. Like, I got I got you for life, G. Mm-hmm. But nah, and I feel like men, it's a it's. It's shadow work in its own way, but like we should make it a whole thing on like, yeah, no, no, not every not every split is clean. But when it's things where it's like, yo, regardless of hey, here's what my head was at it, men still gotta be accountable, like, yo. I may not see eye to eye with you, but I gotta apologize to you for this and this. Hmm. Even if you're saying fuck you right now, I still got you on this and this. Not every man is willing to do that because some are just transactional. Some just be like, yo, like, fuck off. I'm going to do, um, do this, I'm going to do that. And the moment that you say no, fuck you, I'm dipping out. Yeah. That message ain't to us, though. Because they, they karma go hit them on the back end when they, they slip up and they have a kid. Does that work? Carmen. And believe me, these grades just didn't come from my choices. <laughs> oh, I feel you on that, my guy. <laughs> oh, I feel you on that one. <laughs> oh my god. Oh yeah, man. Life life is really unexpected, man. Um but one thing I did I've learned, I guess, within just I guess twenty years of life is just Live at the moment, man. I mean, like, especially with everything now going on, bro. Like, like the world's very fucked up, bro. Like, I remember when I was a kid, you know, school fights, uh, of course, shootings. But it's not like today, bro, where you got people shooting in broad daylight. You got kids now killing other kids. You got kids killing grown-ups. Like, like what what's going on, man? Like, that's kind of fucked up to say. Mm-hmm. Like, like I know, goddamn well, Chicago isn't the same Chicago it was when I was when it was probably back in like 2014, 2015. Like that shit is not the same, bro. At all. That shit is not the same, and it's crazy, bro. And I feel like a lot gets to deal with again everything that's been going on in the world. You know, we've been pretty much locked up in our own houses for a year. You know, with pandemic going on. Um, after that, you start to see a lot of people not wanting to go to work. You start to see, like, a lot of shit just change, man. And it's like, what, what's really going on? And that really did mess up with a lot of people's mental health, you know? Some some made them for the better, and some made them for the worse. True. Very true. Uh, some people, honestly... I went through like spiritual awakenings during that time during Corona. Some people like ended up like finding themselves kind of like, like I, I feel like that was um, make it or break it for hustlers everywhere during that season. Like you knew if you was or if you wasn't mm-hmm. by the end of Corona. So whew, that was a hell of a throwback. Man. Um so to continue that topic, mm-hmm. men trying to figure out like how they can like get uh help in regards like mental health wise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I would say the cheapest start around you can do like online stuff like better help but if you're dealing with like more deeper stuff like you know PTSD and stuff like that you're gonna need a little bit more help but like they have more check out your local clinic you know Um, if let's say if you're a domestic abuse survivor you know I know it's hard to talk about stuff like that but man 
there's programs though out there for people to go through that you know so it's more encouragement for like men to do like what's right for them like yeah the, the thing but the thing is also i feel like for us it's more of like we're scared to open up yeah we really are and, it, and at the end of the day, I feel like we think it's better for us to bottle everything up or forget about it, try to forget about it, but it doesn't because it eats you up. And at the end of the day, little do you know, by the time that you're fed up with everything, that's where you're you're at the tip point of everything, bro. You're, you're just going to be one flick, one, one snap away, and you don't know what you're going to be doing next. Yeah. It's one of those things that... Uh... You gotta play your field and then just as guys, we gotta like stand more down 10 toes on like boundaries. And that is hard as a guy sometimes. Like, because if you're trying to go just straight, fully traditionally, you know, which that is the goal of everyone else, but you also got to be flexible, like, yo, can you afford to do this? Can you handle this emotionally? Can Like, it's, it's certain questions and stuff you got to ask yourself. Mm-hmm. And not be afraid of that answer because everyone's afraid of that answer because they don't want to disappoint anyone. You know? But I think at the end is like if we try so hard to not to disappoint, we're still gonna disappoint at the end. Which because one, but feel what one doesn't get. Yep. So. Woo. Oh yeah, man. I don't know, bro. It's uh, it's just our mentality. I feel like we're more of of reactors than than what we can stop to think for a second. I feel like that's where, where most of us are at, where we react fast right away. We think in a moment, like how you mentioned earlier, it could take 30 minutes a day to a week where we kind of just realize about, oh, shit, what the fuck did we just do? And and the thing, the sad thing about it is it's too late. It's, it's never where we catch it right there and then or right before. Either you send a message, you swipe up, uh, I don't know, you start talking. Um, doesn't have to be again with like uh chain related, but it could be like I don't know, like stealing, robbing, you know, yeah, like actually anything, 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 anything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, anything, yeah, anything, anything, literally, literally anything. But... Yeah, it's it's humbling. It is, bro. Sure. It is, and at the end of the day, you really have to just give yourself that reality check, like it or not, bro. Because I know there's there's plenty of times where honestly, for myself, it's just like been lying. But little do you know, you know you're lying to yourself. Like you, you, you know that feeling because you know yourself. Man, yeah, I can say that was me. Like last year, in regards to like, it was one, one thing I took seriously dearly, but it it was never gonna like necessarily work out because at the end of the day. Addiction is addiction, you know what I mean? And you got to be real, like, someone's not going to choose you over that. And you got to you gotta eat that. But imagine you got the complexity on, like, what if you're dating somebody else at the same time? You got to take responsibility of helping them heal from that, too. Yeah, man. Oof. I was like, more work. But what's the one thing we do have to do? Is, man, we still gotta like clean up and be responsible for stuff. Now well, that and as well as the word responsibility, y'all. You know, hey, I'm gonna be right over here. Mm-hmm. You need me? I'm, 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 I'm gonna be your kid. That don't mean that don't mean no difference. I'm just I'm gonna be over it. Gotta stand on it. Can you repair or fix things later? That's if you choose to, but at the end of the day. 
you 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 gotta you gotta work on yourself before you. I, I feel like dudes don't do that now. We just no. go from relationship situation relationship relationship relationship. No, you you, you gotta along that line. You, you have to heal. Yeah, I I, I, I do do. Um, you really do, because at the end of the day, if you continue on that, like how you're saying that that uh relationship situation relationship relationship relationship, you're never gonna learn or see where you're going wrong because if this girl didn't work out you're dating this girl but then next day, next week or next month you're not with that girl you're with another new girl like ain't it ain't the bitches all the time but you know <laughs> it, it got it's us too bro i understand that you know we, we we're sometimes the problem we just we're, we got too much pride in us as well. That's another thing. We have too much pride. We let that ego, you know, take over. Very true. I've seen it happen to some of the best, like, I'm going to even say, like, no, I can say it's some good, like, semi-role models and stuff like that to where it's like, yo, I was not expecting you to do that. But it's me for getting like they're they're still human. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, come on, you can have like some of the okay. best talents in the world and still you know? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, a good example of uh one of my role models is Kanye, or you know, uh with his anti Semitic comments and all, but at the end of the day, like he's he's just Kanye, man. Yeah, I, I'm not I'm not saying he he's right for saying what he's saying, but just he like, might have a he might have what, a, he is who he is. Like it's not it's yeah. it's raw and uncut. Not like to where it's like okay, this could be glorified. It's like one of those things where it's just like yo, we get it, we don't agree to this, but like that's that's what he own. All right, hey, but. Another thing to that is like I don't really focus on that part of him. It's more of like what had he's done, what he's gone through, what potential he has, the and the brilliance of like of how, how what he can do as a business person, as a musician, as a influencer, as a mm-hmm. designer. You know, so I mean, like you said, everyone's human. We all have our bad days. So you yeah. just can't you just can't blame us all the time. <laughs> um we're like you said, we're the ones that are with the most responsibility, the one that has to provide the role models. But I feel like with all then all that it's like Bottom. a lot of pressure on you. I mean, yeah, but we we also put like a lot on women. And what I mean by that is man. I've seen some shit over the years. You know what I mean? Where it's like, yo, nah, man, you 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 ran that girl ragged, and she lost her shit and came at you. And then there's times where it's like, bro, you are getting milked. Please, please, for the love of God, we will set up dates for you. To just play for the opposite sex, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You got any questions for me, my boy Dank, so far? Uh, oh, got a little dude. deep. Yeah, yeah. It was a good podcast. Um, I guess what inspired you to start off your Cannabis podcast? Yeah. Um, again, this was pretty much during the pandemic. Um, you know, just me, just again smoking, enjoying some other people's podcasts. It was mostly Joe Rogan's podcast that intrigued me on making my own, on you know just bringing everybody from different, you know, backgrounds, uh, different knowledge. You know, just just for one to just intake some different knowledge. I feel like one, it's cool to learn new shit, and we all are coming from different point of views, but as well the love for cannabis. 
and we're here now, my guy. You know, mm. trying to... but but yeah, sure. man. I see you getting ready. Man. Yeah, okay, I'm definitely... ready for for another dab. I see. <laughs> uh, it's been all right, man. I mean, what I really love to do now within within the pod is just just expand more man like like that's why we got the youtube channel doing these reviews vlogging doing content creation so you ever need help uh with reviews and stuff like that um even if it's just like you know uh -huh. turn this horizontal belt out some stuff send it to you guys to upload on youtube and i can do that too um uh, i even have like Someone I know is a consultant, and, like if you ever need like legal advice, unless y'all already got like a legal outlet, then you know. Oh that, no. But if if y'all do, like I even got resources on that, so okay, for sure, bro. I know you. You're really a big uh person within the industry. Um, yes, thank you. So. All right, I had a humble moment, like okay, whoa there, whoa there, but I thank you. Yeah. I don't. That's only because I, I literally moved like on from when I first like started, if that makes sense. Cause at the end of the day, it's like, yo, I'm not like super rich or anything like that. It's it's just I have a shit ton of connections. You know, it's oh, just that's good, bro. Cause uh, you never know who whoever you meet the you, you you once you meet like the right people and you know have a good connection with them, it's it's good to know, you know. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Yeah, but um, if you don't, I think if you have anything else to say, my guy, I think we could wrap it up. All right, wrap, I'll do wrap, the last dab. The last dab. I don't know how what dab you are at, but that's pretty cool, bro. I think that's that's what that's the next rig I'm gonna get now. You know, <laughs> I'm at uh twelve fifty nine, so I'll do this one and then I'll do a globaso to like send the the everything off. So all right, let's go. <laughs> Dude, I can't wait to get back on the on the dabs, bro. I'm so ready. Damn, okay, I see that. So that was number 1260. <laughs> but yeah, no, um, that was fucking awesome, dude. Uh, I definitely am looking, pro uh, looking forward to any collabs you want to do. Even if we just do, like, miniature versions of these, like, do lives, you know what I mean, Where just like hot hot seat, if you will, to where whoever we have hop in on a live. It's like, oh, all right, yeah. what do you do? Uh -huh. so we vibe with them for like Fire. 30 Fire. minutes. Fire. Like, okay, cool. Nice Who person. wants to be the new person? Hot seat wise. And then, you know, because the lives end in like, was it an hour or something like that? Or like two hours or something like that? Oh, really? Well, like if if you're in like a, a the IG live, okay. Like I think Max, you got like four people, or whatever. But I'm just saying, like, let's say for certain things, we could have like, oh, okay, we have this guest. Mm -hmm. uh, then at that point, it's like, okay, cool. We have those three slots filled, or it's, it's us three, and we just still have that and one person we ask, whatever. And yeah. it's a cool thing, you know, like. Sometimes you can just point out like, oh, I know that brand person, or it's like, oh, yo, is is that like homie from from stash stash class? You know, stuff like that. 
Mm-hmm. But also the community perspective where people get a chance to actually like hop on, like, yo, uh, this is what I love. I, I don't do much, but it, I love you guys' show and all of that. Like, yeah. I'm sure that'll, that'll be what's up, and I'm sure it'll be cool to hear and stuff like that, too. So, most definitely, you know, my guy, um, oh, every, I always try to keep in contact with everybody we, we talk to on the pod, you know, just to make some more content, just to keep on touch, you know, the, the networking, the relationship, you feel me? Like, because, like, again, I, I'm vibing with y'all. Hopefully y'all vibing with me and, and my team. So, you know, we, why not keep on that relationship, you know? I'm looking forward to it. But, again, my boy, Dink, thank you for sliding the can of vibe. Uh, thank you for giving me your time, bro. I know oh, this pod has been needed. And I know this won't be the first time people will see you with Canna Vibe. I know you're probably going to be in different vlogs coming up soon. or And I'm sure as hell would we'll want you back in the pod another time. So, All right. as always, ladies and gentlemen, um, this is Canna Vibe. And we we'll probably won't see you to the next you. show. Um, yeah. Take care. Take it easy. Have a good one.